Welcome to the tutorial series on animating with PFM. This series will cover how to animate characters using inverse kinematics, as well as how to use constraints, animation drivers, motion capture, the graph editor, and more. For this introductory tutorial, you will get a basic overview and learn how to animate simple properties. This series assumes that you have already completed the tutorial series on the interface of PFM. In order to animate something in PFM, you have to first enter the animation mode. You can do so by simply switching over to the graph editor in the timeline panel. Try doing so now. Note how a red outline has appeared around the viewport. This outline indicates that you are now in animation mode. Any changes you make to the scene while in this mode, such as moving or rotating an actor, will create an animation keyframe for the current timeline frame. To demonstrate, we'll start with something simple. For our first animation, we'll create a dolly zoom effect with the scene camera. This involves animating two properties of the camera, the field of view and the position. Select the field of view property of the scene camera in the actor editor to continue. Now try changing the field of view to 45 degrees. By changing the value in animation mode, you have now created a keyframe for this property for the current frame, and the property is now an animated property. You can tell if a property is animated by the yellow outline around it. In addition, animated properties also have a play icon like this one next to them in the scene graph. Clicking it will switch directly to the keyframe data for this property in the graph editor. Try clicking it now. The graph editor is where you can see the actual keyframes and animation graphs. As you can see, there is only one keyframe right now, which is the one we have just created for the FOV property. The x-axis value corresponds to the timestamp, in this case, 0, and the y-axis value to the property value, in this case, 45. We'll be referring to the x-axis as the time axis and the y-axis as the data axis from now on. Since we have created only a single keyframe so far, there is no animation graph yet, so let's add a second keyframe. We'll use a duration of two seconds for our animation. To do so, move the playhead to the indicated timestamp on the timeline. Next, change the camera's FOV to 85 degrees to create a new keyframe at this timestamp. As you can see, a graph curve has now formed between the two keyframes in the graph editor. If the curve is not entirely visible or too small, you can right-click inside the graph and choose Fit View to Data to make the view fit the graph curve. To see the effect of the animation curve on the FOV property of the camera, you can move the playhead between the two keyframes. To move the graph view, you can hold down the middle mouse button and move the mouse. You can zoom in and out on the x-axis using the scroll wheel or the y-axis by holding down the control key at the same time. Holding down the alt key while zooming will zoom in or out on both axes. You can also hold the control key and the right mouse button at the same time and move the mouse to zoom in and out on the current mouse position. Instead of using the actor editor, you can also create a new keyframe in the graph editor by pressing this button. Doing so will place the new keyframe on the path of the existing animation curve. Try doing so now. The playhead has been moved in between the two existing keyframes, so this is where the new keyframe will be placed. Once a keyframe has been created, you can select it by clicking it or by creating a rectangular selection around it by pressing and holding the left mouse button. Try selecting the middle keyframe now. Next, click this button to switch to the Move mode. The Move mode allows you to freely move keyframes around on the X and Y axis, updating the graph when you do. Try moving the keyframe by clicking into the graph and moving the mouse. You can see how the path of the graph curve changes accordingly. You can hold the Alt key while moving the keyframe to only move it on the X-axis, or hold the Shift key to only move it on the Y-axis. 
Alternatively, you can also use the two text fields at the top of the graph editor to change the timestamp or data value of the selected keyframe to specific values. You may have noticed that, when selecting the keyframe, two new dots have appeared to each side of the keyframe. These are called handles and allow you to control the flow of the curve around the keyframe. Try clicking and dragging one of the handles to see how it affects the curve. There are three different types of keyframe handles, free, aligned, and vector. The default handle type when you create a new keyframe is aligned, which means that changing one of the two handles will also affect the other accordingly. If you want to move the handles independently from each other, for instance, to create a sharp angle in the curve, you can change the handle type to free. To do so, right-click the selected keyframe, then select handle type, free, and then try moving the handles again. The vector handle type is special in that the handles will always point to the previous or next keyframe handle in the curve. Vector handles cannot be moved. Attempting to do so will convert them to free handles. In addition, you can change the flow of the curve altogether by changing its interpolation type. To change the interpolation type, right-click the curve, then choose Interpolation, and select one of the types to see its effect. Changing the interpolation type only affects the portion of the curve between the selected keyframe and the next keyframe. The previous curve segment will remain unaffected. Note that the keyframe handles only work if the interpolation type is set to Bezier, which is the default interpolation type. All interpolation types, except Bezier, Linear, and Constant, are also influenced by the easing type. The easing type controls the interpolation speed of the curve segment and can be used, for example, to make a curve segment start slowly, then speed up, and then slow down near the end. You can find the different easing types by right-clicking the curve and choosing one of the items in the Easing Type submenu. You can find an overview of the available easing types and interpolation methods in the web browser panel. Another method of manipulating animation curves is by using the curve drawing mode, which allows you to draw curves by hand. In order to use it, you will first have to switch back to Select mode. Next, simply hold down the Shift key and then click into the graph view to start drawing an animation curve. The curve will be applied once you let go of the left mouse button. PFM will automatically smooth the curve and generate keyframes that allow you to manipulate the curve further. Remember that you can use Ctrl-Z and Ctrl-I to undo or redo your last actions. For our dolly zoom, we'll keep it simple and stick to two keyframes with Bezier interpolation. Press Continue to continue to the next slide and reset the graph. To complete our dolly zoom effect, we still need to animate the position of our camera. We want to move the camera over the same time period as the FOV, so let's move the playhead back to the timestamp of the first keyframe. Instead of moving the playhead manually, you can use the left square bracket and right square bracket keys to quickly jump from one keyframe to another. Try using the keys to move the playhead back to the timestamp of the first keyframe. Next, switch to the work camera so we can move the scene camera in the viewport. 
Now, select the scene camera in the actor editor and move it to the indicated position in the viewport using the manipulator controls. Note how, in the graph editor, the position has been split into its X, Y, and Z components, which each have their own graph. This is the case for all vector and angle-based properties. Now move the playhead to the second keyframe by pressing the right square bracket key and then move the camera to the indicated target position. Make sure to do it in this order, otherwise moving the camera will overwrite the position at the first keyframe. Congratulations, you have now created your first animation in PFM. You can see it in action by switching back to the scene camera and using the playback controls to play the animation from the beginning. This concludes the first animation tutorial. You can now end the tutorial or press the continue button to start the next tutorial in this series.